بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Fiqh of Hadith class We're still in عمدة الأحكام in the book of fasting and we've reached Hadith 196 Hadith number 196 Allah's Apostle صلى الله عليه وسلم was informed that I had taken an oath. Who is the narrator of this hadith? It is Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhuma. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhuma said, Allah's apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was informed that I had taken an oath to fast daily and to pray every night, all the night, throughout my life. This is the intention of Abdullah radiallahu anhuma. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was informed that I took an oath to fast every day and pray every night throughout my entire life. So Allah's apostle came to me and asked whether it was correct. Did I really take this oath or no? I replied, let my parents be sacrificed for you. I said so. Bi abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah. Yes. Yes, I did. The Prophet sallallahu said, you cannot do that. So fast for a few days and give up for a few days. And pray and sleep. And pray and sleep. Fast three days a month as the reward of good deeds is multiplied ten times and that will be equal to one year of fasting. I replied, I can do better than that. The Prophet ﷺ said to me, fast one day and give up fasting for a day. And that is the fasting of Prophet Dawood, and that is the best fasting. I said, I have the power to fast better, or more than that. The Prophet ﷺ said, there is no better fasting than that. This is very beautiful hadith, and very important hadith also. The hadith of Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu anhuma. First, it shows the zeal and the love of the companions to do good deeds. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he was young at that time. And he was excited how he could please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he took an oath. He was committed to do what? To fast every day. And pray every night. Now was this the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? No. Why not? Isn't it good to fast every day? If it's good, why not to do it every single day? It's actually harder to do one day. Fast. Break the fast another day. That's not the only reason. Yes. You nourish your body, you have the entire night. Actually, you get bigger sometimes when you're fasting. Hmm. If you fast every single day, you are going against the purpose of your creation. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you? To worship Him. He placed you on this earth to live as a human and as a Muslim. So you need to live. Imagine if every day you are fasting. Will you ever be invited to lunch? Will you ever have lunch? So there, are, there is a wisdom behind that. So you fast and you break your fast. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever turns away from my sunnah is not from me. 
Although the Prophet ﷺ is the perfect worshipper, that's not what he did. Yet we have an example of the companions in Abdullah bin Amr ibn As who wanted to do this. What did the Prophet ﷺ do? He encouraged him, tell, told him, yes, go ahead. He asked him. Again, always the Prophet ﷺ verifies. He came to him. Although he's the messenger of Allah وسلم, he cared about people. He wanted to correct them. He did not just let it go. He told him, did you say this? And the love of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As to the messenger of Allah وسلم, is clear when he said, yes, may, may my parents be sacrificed for you. This is a dua that I am willing, if it come to protecting you, I am willing to do that even at the expense of sacrificing the life of my parents. That's how much they love the Prophet ﷺ. And now we may say, yes, yes, I do the same thing. And you hear the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, only the sunnah to apply it and you are not willing to do. So how come you say you are willing to sacrifice your parents for the Prophet ﷺ? So he said, yes. So what did the Prophet ﷺ do? Again, look at the wisdom of the Prophet ﷺ. He did not tell him that is forbidden. This is against Islam. He gave him alternative. He gave him answer. Always, when something is prohibited, try to provide solution. Don't just say you cannot do this and stop. Try to provide solution. The Prophet ﷺ told him, you cannot do that. Now, what does it mean you cannot do that? Does it mean you will not be able to do it? Or you are not allowed to do it? Maybe both, yes. First, you are not allowed to do it because that's not the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And if you turn away from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, then you are not following his sunnah. And you cannot. The Prophet ﷺ knows that Abdullah bin Umar cannot do that. Why? Because definitely one day will come, you will be sick. One day you will come, you will be tired. One day you will come, you are old. And that did happen actually. So what do you do? The Prophet ﷺ told him, fast for a few days and give up the fast for a few days. And pray and sleep. Same thing. If you are awake all the night, one day you will be okay. The second day you will start getting tired. You did not sleep. Third day, and then you will sleep. So you cannot do that. All days you are praying in the night. And that's why you fast and you break your fast. Now, this is an example actually of extremism that the Prophet ﷺ corrected. That is a form of extremism. When you pray every single night, all the time. Now we're not saying you don't pray to Hajjud, you pray. But he meant he prays all the night, the entire night. And he fasts all days. That is a form of extremism that the Prophet ﷺ corrected. Again, look at the ease of the religion. That's what the hadith shows us. That Islam is the religion of ease. It asks you to do some things with difficulties, but they are not that difficult. Prophet ﷺ told him, fast three days a month as the reward of good deed is multiplied ten times. You fast three days times ten, this is thirty, and the month is thirty days, so as if you fasted the entire month. I replied, what did Abdullah say? I can do better than that. I don't want to fast three days of the, of the uh, month. I want to do better than that. The Prophet ﷺ told him, fast one day and give up fasting for a day. Fast every other day. And that is the fasting of Prophet Dawood. And that is the best fasting. Why this is the best fasting? First, because... You are doing the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is fasting. And also, you are fulfilling the right of your body. One day you eat, you have your wives, you have your friends, you have your activities. And one day you are fasting. 
So you are balanced. On the other hand also you are going against nature. So you are not fasting every day and then you are used to it so your body is used to it. No, every day is a new day. And every day when you are fasting this is ibadah. So that's the best fasting. You fulfilled all, all your rights. It is balanced. That is the best fasting. Abdullah bin Umar, Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu anhu, he said, I can do better than that. I have the power to do better than that. What did the Prophet sallallahu say? There is no better than that. Is there another way in the middle between fasting all days and fasting every other day? Yes, there is. You could fast for two days and break your fast one day. Then you fast two days and break your fast one day. But that's not better than fasting every other day. The Prophet ﷺ said, this is the best fasting. Fasting of Dawood ﷺ. Fasting of Dawood ﷺ is the better fasting. It is the best. That tells us that fasting is not something new. It was known for those before us, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. This shows you the virtue of Dawood alayhi salam. Although remember that Dawood alayhi salam was a king and was a prophet. So he fulfilled the needs for his body, for his kingdom. And at the same time, he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not forget that also. So this is the beautiful hadith, hadith 196. Then we have hadith 197. Again, Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu anhuma narrated, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, Indeed, the most beloved fasting to Allah is the fasting of Dawood. And the most beloved prayer to Allah is the prayer of Dawood. This is the same narration the same hadith, but with different words. He used to sleep half the night and pray one-third of the night and sleep one-sixth. And he used to fast one day and break his fast the next day. Now, previous hadith told us why fasting of Dawud is the best fasting. What did he do? He fasts one day and breaks his fast the other day. Here, we learn also about his prayer, the best prayer in the night. Why? He sleeps half the night and then he prays one third of the night. And he sleeps then one sixth of the night. Let's analyze this. If we have six hours of the night, what do you do in those six hours? Half of it is three hours. You sleep three hours. Then one third, you pray. How many hours? Two hours. Then you sleep for one hour, which is one-sixth. So you have sleeping, you have prayer, and then you have what? Sleeping. That is not difficult. It is actually a little bit difficult, but if you are used to do it, it is not difficult. People now wake up in the middle of the night for a program to watch, and then they go back to sleep, or even workers. They have night shifts. Or doctors, they receive a phone call and they wake up and then they sleep again. They are used to it. So why don't you do it when it comes to the prayer? What is beautiful about it again is that you sleep and you pray. You don't only sleep or you don't only pray. And you don't start sleeping and you end praying. Or you start praying and you end sleeping. You sleep, you pray and you sleep. You had enough sleep and you had enough prayer. Two-thirds asleep and one-third praying. Why it is not the opposite? Why not one-third asleep and two-thirds praying? The night is for sleep. If you do more than that, it will affect your day. 
you will not be fully awake in your day. But unfortunately, actually, you see some people, they are willing to stay awake, but not for the ibadah. And in the morning, they do whatever they want. When it comes to the prayer, they don't do it. Next hadith. Narrated Abu Huraira, radiallahu an, Awsani Khalili, my beloved friend or my friend, advised me with three qualities. Awsani Khalili bi thalath. He gave me instruction of three things. Fasting three days of the month. To fast three days of the month. Pray with her before I go to sleep and not to forget to perform duha prayer. Now we are discussing the book of fasting. And in this hadith, Abu Hurairah says, the Prophet gave him instruction of fasting three days of the month. What are those three days? 13, Here in this hadith, they are not specified. They could be any day. Why? Because every day multiplied by 10 times 3, that is the entire month. So three days is sufficient. But some scholars said it came in another place, explicit, 13th, 14th, and 15th. And there is a wisdom behind that. Again, when there is tide, the moon is full, and people have their highest activity. When you fast, you are reducing this activity, so you are calming down. It is healthier. This is something scientific that is recently found only. But that's the greatness of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Now the beginning of the hadith, Abu Hurairah says, Awsani Khalili. What is the meaning of the Khalil? Friend. Friend. Then what is the meaning of companion? Sahib. Khulla. Khulla. Khalil is from Khulla. Khulla is the highest level of friendship, of love. That is the Khulla. That is the Khulla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا Allah took Ibrahim as Khalil. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَوْ كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذًا مِنَ الدُّنْيَا خَلِيلًا If I were to take Khalil from this life, I would have taken Abu Bakr. وَلَكِنَّ صَاحِبَكُمْ But your companion means the Prophet ﷺ, but I am the Khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khulla, that level, in your heart, cannot have more than one. That's why the Prophet ﷺ did not say, Allah is my Khalil and Abu Bakr. It has to be one. While love could be to more than one. The Prophet ﷺ loved many people, even amongst the wives. The Prophet ﷺ loved Khadija anha. He loved Aisha anha. And he loved all other wives. He loved his wives also. Love in the heart could fit more than one. But the khulla is only for one. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anha is saying that my Khalil, my beloved friend, or the only beloved one is the Prophet ﷺ gave me this instruction. This shows you also how much Abu Hurairah loved the Prophet ﷺ. Fasting three days of the month. Pray with her before I go to sleep. When is it better to pray with her? Before you sleep or after you wake up in tahajjud? After you wake up. Why would the Prophet ﷺ tell Abu Hurairah to pray with her before going to sleep then? There is a reason. 
in general, it is better to pray after you wake up, after you sleep. But if you stay awake for a later hour, then most likely you will miss this prayer. If you go to sleep, you will not wake up. So in this case, no, it is better to pray with her. And Abu Huraira in particular, he used to be awake for the memorization of the hadith. This is the second quality. The third one, and not to forget to perform duha prayer. Again, duha prayer, is it performed every day or occasionally? From this hadith, every day. What's the reward for duha prayer? Every joint of your body, you will get the reward of that by performing duha prayer. More than 360 hasana by performing duha prayer. So it is important. So these are three qualities. Make sure that you are doing them. If you are doing like Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Then we move all the way to hadith 200. We we'll skip over and we move to hadith 200. Again Abu Huraira, narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one of you should not fast on Friday without also fasting either a day before it or a day after it. Now after we discuss the recommended fast, we come to what is prohibited and disliked fasting. Friday. Do you fast Friday or you don't? You don't. Why? Prophet said, Friday is like Eid, so you don't, you should eat and drink. But if you are fasting, you can fast like two days together. With Friday. I'm not asking about fasting two days together, Friday alone, can you fast it? We just said that the best fasting is fasting every other day. So if, if Thursday you broke your fast, Friday will you fast or you will not? The best fasting, the fasting of Dawood alayhi salam. If Dawood alayhi salam, you want to follow him, to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu on Thursday you were not fasting. On Friday, will you fast? You will fast. On Saturday, hmm? you won't fast. What happened? You fasted only Friday. Can you fast Friday alone or no? Yeah, every two weeks you will fast Friday. Isn't that, is that okay? Yes. You're doing it continuously. I want to fast four days of the month. All Fridays. No, Why? Friday. Exactly. If Friday comes on Arafah, for instance, yes, you fast. But to choose Friday alone, that is not allowed based on this hadith. One of you should not fast on Friday without also fasting either a day before it or a day after it. If you fast Thursday, can you fast Friday? Yes. You started fasting Friday. What should you do? Fast Saturday. What if you did not fast Saturday? But you did it. Someone fasted Friday. And next day he wanted to fast, but he woke up and he ate and then he said, I'm not fasting. He had intention. Do you tell him, go back? <laughs> no. So what's the ruling on fasting Friday alone? It is disliked. Can you still do it? It is, is it prohibited or disliked? Should not. It's prohibited. Prohibited. 
Yeah, I mean, you have your, your other uh, things that you conditions, right? The day before or the day after. So he's giving you conditions. Yeah, without these conditions, it becomes disliked or prohibited. It's even more prohibited. More prohibited. Next hadith, hadith 201. Narrated Sa'd ibn Ubaid, rahimahullah, I witnessed the Eid with Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. Sa'd ibn Ubaid, he said, I witnessed the Eid with Umar ibn al-Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him, radiallahu anhu. And he said, meaning Umar, Umar radiallahu anhu said, these are two days now, when was that? On the day of Eid. Because he said, I witnessed the Eid. Sa'ad ibn Ubaid said, I witnessed the Eid with Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he said, means Umar, when he was given the khutbah, he said, these are two days. Is it day of Eid or two days? How many days of Eid? Eid al-Adha. Two days or one day? Three days, but Umar said two days. These are two days. I'm saying that in general. What is in general? When we break our fast, how many days of Eid do we have? One. One. He says two, two days of Eid. Yes, he meant two days of Eid. These are two days of Eid. Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. That Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, forbade fasting them. The day you break your fast, يَوْمُ تُفْطِرُونَ And the day you eat from your sacrifice. وَيَوْمَ تَأْكُلُونَ مِنْ نُسُكِكُمْ What's the ruling on fasting those two days? It is forbidden to fast the day of Eid, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. What if a woman wanted to make up? Her fast. And she fasted for three days, then the day of Eid came. Does she fast or no? What about the one who has to fast 60 consecutive days? Hmm? You skip those days and you start over? Yeah, you make them at the end like that. You don't count them in the 60 days. So it is not consecutive then? Yes, because this is more direct and so you cannot fast on it because you're prohibited. This is more specific. This is specific, yeah. And that is not specific? 60 consecutive days? Well, the majority of scholars, they say it is prohibited. You don't fast those days. And they won't count of your fasting. And they won't mess your fasting. You just continue. You go on with your fasting for 60 consecutive days. The day of Eid will not break the continuation of the fasting of those days. Okay, we'll stop here inshallah. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa sahbihi ajma'in.